thank you uh, Dr. Okay, uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. Thank you, Dr. Su, for inviting me uh, to share knowledge. Okay, uh, I will say that this is sharing knowledge. And, and thank you also for the introductions that reminds us on our young and free days. But now it's still young, but not that free. Okay, and... Yeah, so my, my first degree was, uh, was in microbiology and then I continued my master under the aquatic biotechnology and then uh, I did my PhD in United States in aquatic uh, diseases, which is I focusing on the disease in aquatic organism. Uh, but still, you know that disease and microbes, they are very, very related because the disease is caused by the microbes. And when I came back in 2013, I served a department of aquaculture, faculty of agriculture. Okay, if you want to find me, uh, I always in the department, uh, sometime I will be in my uh, institute, okay, Institute of uh, International Institute of Aquaculture and Aquatic Sciences, which is located in Port Dickson. Okay, it's an institute under UPM. Uh, maybe many of you, you never heard about this institute, but uh, we actually, we... Uh, Kita, uh, kita ada, okay, uh, UPM ada uh, Aquaculture Institute, okay, so uh, most of you are welcome to go to our institute, okay, maybe Dr. Su can bring you guys uh, a trip, so okay, there, so I'll talk about the institute later, so for today, this morning, uh, I would like to share with you guys on the aquatic microbiology topic, which, and then the topic we're focusing on the microbes in aquatic uh, ecosystem, so you know that microbes are everywhere so it's on your hand it's on your table it's on your phone it's on your back so microbes are everywhere okay it's either that are beneficial microbe or bad microbes okay so uh when we focusing on the why it's not changing uh, we can cannot see your slide actually oh really I just share. Okay, that's that. So maybe my view, my view. Oh yeah, yeah. Yeah. Now, can 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 you see it now? Boleh tak? Ah, boleh, 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 boleh. Boleh. Okay. Alright. Okay. So for the introduction, alright. Okay. So you know uh, aquatic ecosystem so you know that world. Okay, our bumi ni seventy five percent is actually covered by the world. Water. Okay, so there's an aquatic ecosystem. So how you determine the difference between the aquatic ecosystem is always based on your salinity. So that's why we know that in aquatic, okay, we have a fresh water, we have a marine water, we have a brackish water. Kita ada air tawa, air masin, and also air payau. Okay, and then uh, they contain several of uh, organisms. So those organisms is actually uh, grouped by their location. Even though, let's like, say, okay, for the example, in the sea even though they are big in the one water body but uh, each of their punya kawasan level of uh, that water so they have their own different organism so they live there based on their re requirements okay so such as the salinity temperature ph sunlight oxygen nutrition so those are the factors that determine where the organism uh, will live uh, let's say uh, in the surface of the oceans. So in the surface in the ocean, they are a bit warmer because they're direct to the sunlight. So some of the organism and microbe, they need that sunlight. They need that temperature. They need that kind of the pH. So there's a certain microbes or certain organism that can live there. And then meanwhile, some of the microbes, some of the organism, they don't really like the sunlight. Okay, they only like manji-manji punya sunlight. They might be in the middle of the uh, water ecosystem. And maybe that uh, the organism that doesn't need uh, sunlight anymore, they, they cannot live with sun, they, can, they cannot live with higher temperature, so they will be at the bottom. So each level, each layers of the uh, you know, uh, ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem, they have their uh, uh, own uh, habitats of the microbes and also organism. So in that ecosystem, of aquatics, so they have four groups of organisms, okay? They name me as a plankton, nectar, banthus, and microbes. So I will talk about this uh, after this, all right? I have a problem in changing my slide, okay? 
Okay, so aquatic ecosystem, okay, there's a three types of ecosystem. Okay, the first one is freshwater ecosystem. So freshwater ecosystem is air tawa, usually uh, like lakes, pond, something that's standing. Uh, the standing water meaning that in the lake, in ponds, there are no currents. Like ocean, there are the currents, kan? They, are the, they are free, free flowing current. But kalau lakes and pond, we call it as a standing water. There are no uh, current movement. Okay. And then uh, some of them, they are moving water. Moving water, like uh, anak sungai, river, uh, streams. So we call it the moving because they are moving from some, from end to end. So they are the punya flow. And then the second uh, type of ecosystem, uh, aquatic, they call it a transitional communities. Okay, transitional meaning that this uh, transition, mungkin daripada, daripada laut, uh, maybe pada anak sungai, dia nak transition pergi ke uh, laut. So they call it transition communities. So biasanya itu macam swarm, marshes, okay, barrier lands, islands. So they call it the traditional communities. And then the biggest one is a marine ecosystem. So the marine ecosystem, the salinity is between more than uh, 15, okay, 15 to up to 50, okay, kemasinan dia berbeza. So they are called a marine, okay, uh, dia tadi pada shorelines, coral reef and open ocean. So that's a very important for you to uh, know. Uh, the ecosystem, the aquatic, where, okay, and then the type of the ecosystem, because when you understand the types and then the ecosystem, then you will understand what's the microbes that actually, or the organism that living in there. So as I uh, told you before, okay, uh, we have uh, those type, four types, okay, so they call it as a drifter, drifter ni plankton, okay, it's very small, so uh, it's a microscopic, which is, uh, you cannot see using your naked eyes, okay, you cannot see directly, so what you have to do is that you have to look them under the micro, uh, microscope. They are floating everywhere. They are freely swimming. Okay, usually they are phytoplankton, zooplankton. So most of the organism like the fishes and others aquatic animal, they feed on them. Okay, the phytoplankton and zooplankton. And then they have nectons. Nectons is all the organism that they are swimming actively in open water and they are independent meaning that no matter what's the currents no matter what's the flow of uh, that water they are always there and then we have another important uh, group of organism that who likes to be at the bottom of the sea uh, or the river or the lake so they call it as the ben bentos okay those bentos is an organism that always be on the bottom so they like to attach to the hard surface and then, so today, that we are going to talk is on the decomposer, the microbes. So we know microbes, they are very unique, okay? Microbes, they are small, they are unique, and they are smart. So that's why you, a microbiology student, so you have to think, make sure that you are like a microbes, okay? Microbes, they are smart. So why I say that they are smart, they always have a way to penetrate into the organism. If they are bad microbe, they always find a way to infect the host. They selalu ada jalan untuk dia menyebabkan penyakit. Let's say kalau satu jalan dia tak berjaya masuk, they will change, they will mutate, okay? And then they will change the strain until they can cause the infection. That's just how smart is microbes, okay? So uh, God make it into a very, you know, things are very complicated, but uh, they have a very beautiful way uh, mechanism of it. So that microbe also you cannot see under the microscope, some of them, but some of them you can see it, like the algae, you can always see the algae, fungi, you can see the fungi, but if you want to look into the detail uh, of the fungi, you have to use the microscope. So uh, they are also in the aquatic ecosystem, uh, algae, fungi, bacteria, viruses, they are free load, meaning that they are there and then they are everywhere in the ecosystem. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I'm all, I'm having a problem in changing the slide. Okay. So uh, for the aquatic uh, aquatic food web, okay, in the ecosystem, aquatic ecosystem, they are primary producer. Okay. 
dalam tu ada primary producer such as phytoplankton and cyanobacteria and then this primary producer okay uh, they've been consumed by the primary consumer herbivore zooplankton so herbivore and zooplankton ni uh, terdiri okay from daripada protista ciliate bacteria and viruses and then they have a secondary consumer the organism uh, they also uh, herbivores and zooplankton and also the tertiary consumer is the fish that eat the fish so all these consumers and also producer they will uh, contribute to the dissolved organic matters which is the ciliate bacteria and viruses because they have a very complex uh, mechanism so the dissolved organic matters is uh, it can be used as a feed uh, to others organism but sometimes they also will cause um, apa, disruption in the water quality okay and in the microbes in the aquatic ecosystem, uh, like what I said before, they are differ in marine environments or, and then it's depending on the salinity, average temperature, the depth, the nutrient content. But uh, both uh, these freshwater and marine environment, they are provide as a excellent habitat for microorganism. Okay, there's a bacteria, archaea, viruses, fungi, algae and protozoa. Uh, some of the uh, algae they like to be at the uh, high temperature so sometimes you can see that the blooming of the algae uh, in the lakes okay because of uh, when the temperature and when the nutrient is enough for them so they will bloom okay some of the bacteria you can find it uh, more as a uh, like a thermophilic color panas mungkin dia akan ada dekat uh, surface and it don't need really that temperature very high, they will be at the bottom. So that's the microbes in an aquatic ecosystem. So how, how many of them, how abundance is those microbes in the aquatic? So like the viruses, usually we can find it between 10 to 6, 10 to 8 per meal. And then for the bacteria, okay, usually in the aquatic ecosystem, the abundance is between 10 to 5, 10 to 6 CFU per meal. And then the nanoflagellates, we can find it a bit lower, 10 to 2 to 10 to 3. And then the microzooplankton is between 10 to 3 and 10 to 4. Uh, so why these numbers is important? Uh, usually, uh, that is you. Uh, that you have an idea. Okay, when you isolate the bacteria in the environment, so you know the abundance of that. What's the maximum numbers of the bacteria in the aquatic? So when you do it in your lab, if you are a scientist, okay, uh, and you know that okay, you want to apply something in uh, your experiment, so you know that okay, uh, things that can cause a disease usually maybe between 10 to 5 to 10 to 6 because that's the number of abundance of the bacteria in the water, all right? And uh, those microbes, okay, the microbial community, the composition, they are different, okay? They are very, they uh, berubah-rubah dan, uh, dan berbeza. It's, uh, even though they are in the same water body, even though they are dalam satu kawasan laut yang sama, tetapi the communities of the microbes, they are different. That's why I told you, it bergantung kepada kedalaman and also the substrate that they like. Because some microbes ni, microbes, they are like to uh, form a biofilm. Okay, because the biofilm is like a city of the microbes. Okay, uh, at the first uh, phase of the biofilm, uh, they are interact with each other and then they find the place to colonize. Bila they dah find the space to colonize and then they will uh, talk to each other and then they akan panggil dia punya gang lah to colonize together until they form a very beautiful city. So the city of the microbes. So when the biofilm already matured, so from that, is either it can be a, a beneficial effects to the organism that around them or maybe it can cause a disease okay a bad effects to organism okay so uh, that's what the characteristic of the microbe and also uh, those microbes okay in that community usually they will be influenced by the local conditions especially on the uh, microbe uh, environmental changes let's say if that microbes uh, on the surface they like temperature between 27 to 30 and then one day there's a heavy rain when the heavy rains okay uh, definitely the temperatures of the surface okay the surface of the lake ke ocean ke dia akan berubah they will change into a uh, sejuk 
So those microbes, my uh, community, yang dekat surface tu, they akan respond to the changes. So meaning some of them may be died. Okay, some of them may uh, apa kekurangan nutrients untuk hidup. Some some of them maybe the chemical already run off. So that those environmental disruption will affect the communities of the microbe at the certain level when the environments are changes. So dia sama macam kita lah, like a human. Okay, kalau you easily to get cough, uh, batu ataupun sesama during uh, hujan atau environment yang sejuk. So dia akan change diri you. So menyebabkan you are tend to get uh, flu. Okay, uh, so, but some of you, uh, if it's too hot, okay, pun you akan demam. Uh, so different people or different organism and different microbe, they have their own uh, requirement and they have their own specificity, what they like. So that is very important uh, for you to understand uh, the characteristic of that species. This is more for the scientists, okay? If scientists, let's say that you are working in the lab, you have one, this bacteria, and then you have to study the behavior of that bacteria, what they like, what they don't like, what they need, what they don't need in order for you to have a optimum, okay, uh, optimum uh, condition of that microbe. Because microbes, they will work very effectively if you put it in their own environment. Macam you lah, kalau you sangat uh, aktif waktu panas, okay, bila panas you sangat aktif, meaning that you can think much more, you can be very active, you can full swing your potential. So, that's your environment. Okay, so even we are in human, we have to identify what environment that make us work best. Uh, macam saya pun, saya akan make sure macam I like environment yang senyap, okay, uh, not too hot, not too cold. Uh, and then at that time, I will work more proactive, okay, a little bit active. So that's the same thing with the microbes, okay. And also that uh, changing environmental, uh, when it's uh, changed the microbes punya behavior, uh, will not only affect the microbes, because some of the microbes, they are very important uh, in algae, in plant, in animal species, because they need that microbe to do some mechanism, some process, like the algae, they need microbe in order for them to, you, uh, to do the nutrient cycle. So when those environmental factors affect the microbes, at the same time, they will also affect okay, the process of the algae. So they interact, we are always interact with each other. So kalau seorang sakit, yang ni pun akan sakit. So the same thing with humans, okay? So, uh, what's the factors? Okay, what's the environmental uh, factors uh, that influencing uh, those microbial communities? So, the water chemistry, okay, the nutrient runoff from the surrounding land. Let's say that I bagi example in the aquaculture ponds lah. Okay, so you are the aquaculture ponds, and then you have also near your pond you are the agriculture activities, let's say, uh, are the tanam pokok lah. So, and then when they are actually uh, put the pesticide on the agriculture activity, and the water will flow into the aquaculture ponds. So, those things will affect, okay, that chemical will affect, okay, you punya uh, microbes and also you punya hidupan dekat dalam ponds tu. So that's why also in aquaculture, so if you want to build a farm, kalau kita nak buat farm, kita nak culture uh, udang, ikan, so we have to make sure that our surrounding uh, tak ada agriculture activity because those things will affect our ponds. Even though you have no uh, you have no intention uh, when you do a pesticide punya activity, you tak ada intention pun nak masuk those pesticide dekat dalam the aquaculture system but when raining, bila hujan so saliran tu selalu akan ada especially on the soil you know soil is the connected kan soil ni dia tak ada barrier so dia cuma ada absorption so those absorption dia boleh masuk melalui soil and then can affect the aquaculture uh, activity and also they will influence the temperatures, okay, the organic matter, pH, water movement, oxygen concentration, like so those are all the factors that will affect uh, the microbial communities. Okay. And the environmental factors, okay. Uh, okay, um, 
microbes is not only in the aquatic environment, it's also in the organism, in the fish microbiome. So environmental factor that uh, influence those fish microbiome. Okay, kalau kita ada environmental stressor, like climate change. Climate change is now a, is a huge problem. It's quite alarming. And then pollution, seasonal change, ecosystem dynamic. Those stressor, uh, they will affect uh, the water parameters, the temperature, the pH, the salinity, the hardness. So when this happens, they are actually will affect the organism in that aquatic environment. So I pick one pollution. Let's say there's uh, heavy metal pollution. So heavy metal pollution in an aquatic uh, environment. So those will affect the microbes. And then they will affect the water microbiome. So, so there's a planter, planting. So when there's a, a effects on the microbes, they will affect the carbon fixation. Nutrient metabolism, primary production will be affected by these changes, by this stressor. Meanwhile, in the fish, okay, kalau dalam ikan tu, so in our gut, not only fish, in our gut, we always have a good bacteria. So those bacteria, they help in the digestion, nutrition. Some of them, they will increase the immunity. They will help in the nitrogen cycle. So when the microbes, when the environment, the aquatic environment polluted with those pollution, they will affect the fish, then they will affect the microbes inside the uh, fish, in the skin, the gills, and also in the gut. Because uh, uh, you know the immunity, okay, uh, immunity kita, our first, kita panggil dia our first barrier lah, askar pertama dekat kita ialah skin. Skin is our, the first, our immunity barrier kita. Kalau skin kita kalah, tak boleh nak, uh, not fight for the uh, pathogen ke, and then we will go deeper and deeper. Uh, so, kalau microbes tu dah, uh, they dah try to masuk, kalau, this one the bad one, okay? Kalau the bad one tu dah memang penetrate into the skin, uh, so usually uh, our our immunity pun akan disrupted. So, it will uh, affect, okay, the fish and also any of the aquatic mammal microbiome. So, this is to show you that the microbes ni easily get affected by any of the changes in the aquatic micro um, aquatic ecosystem. The pollution, the environmental stressor is the most uh, factor that can affect their behavior and also their punya effectiveness. Okay, and this loop, microbial loop, just to show you guys that everything are very, they are interact with each other. Bacteria, they interact with the virus. So uh, they have, uh, bacteriophage, okay, uh, the bacteria that affect the virus, and then the protista. So the bacteria ni, they can take up the dissolved organic matters, okay, which is, will be used by the uh, protista, they provide the nutrients, and then the viruses also interact with the metazone, they interact with the autotroph. So those interaction, some interaction, they will have a good interaction. Some of them is a bad interaction. So they have two way of, uh, we call it interaction, is a good interaction and a bad interaction. They have a mutualism, commensalism, and they have a parasitism. So those interaction usually, kalau, is a the whole new topics, okay? So, kalau in my subject, kalau microbiology aquatic, I akan ajar lah on the interaction. So, interaction apa yang membawa kepada kebaikan dan interaction apa yang boleh membawa keburukan. Because it's not only human that talking, microbes, they are actually talking. So, they have their own language. Let's say bacteria. Bacteria ni, dia ada dia punya own language. Dia ada gram-positive punya language dan gram-negative punya language. So, those bacteria, when they interact with each other, then they will akan uh, jadi, they akan confer some other beneficial effects or bad effects. Uh, for example, okay. So, uh, you know the term of the quorum sensing. Quorum sensing. Quorum, cukup quorum. Cukup quorum tu cukup gang. So, bacteria, kalau dia ada cukup gang dia, cukup quorum, then they will signal them to become sama ada jadi okey atau jadi tidak okey. Let's say kalau Vibrio. Okay. Vibrio ni ialah bakteria yang boleh menyebabkan penyakit pada ikan dan udang. So Vibrio at the one certain level, kalau tak cukup level dia, dia okey. 
it will not cause a disease. But when they interact, then they should put quorum, then they will produce a signaling that can cause a disease. Okay. Okay. Uh, so just the same thing dengan kita lah. Kalau let's say kita nak jadi jahat, contohnya, uh, kita kena ada, biasanya dia bergang lah. When gang, cukup gang, baru kita akan, kita akan work, okay? Kita akan, uh, sama ada we want to become a good or bad one. So, the same thing, the microbes. They are talking to each other, not only between species, between organism also. They are actually, they interact. Okay, so what are the roles of uh, microbes in the aquatic micro, uh, in the aquatic ecosystem? The roles of the microbe. So some of microbes, they are decomposition. They are act as a decomposer. What they do is that they break down the complex organic uh, matter, uh, complex molecule. They break it down into a simpler, okay, organic and also into the inorganic molecule. So when they break down, their products, okay, the simple organic too, usually is being used by other organisms. Uh, so that's why they, they are actually interact and they need each other. For example, okay, let's say the phytoplankton, the death of the phytoplankton, they die, the zooplankton, so they're becoming a waste, okay. So when they're becoming a waste, okay, those waste is actually will be decomposed by the bacteria, okay. When they compose by the bacteria, and then, uh, yang hasil-hasil yang simple tu nanti it uh, serve as a nutrient to other organism pula. Uh, so, how they are actually, they need each other. And once people, or the microbes punya waste might be a beneficial to others. Okay. Okay. So, they are also play a role in the nitrogen cycle. Uh, I think nitrogen cycle as a, microbes or biochem, biotech student, you know what's the nitrogen cycle. So nitrogen cycle is very important, uh, especially in the uh, water conditions, okay? From the ammonia, they converted into the nit nitrate, into the nitrate and into the gas nitrogen. So ammonia ni, kalau dekat dalam environment, okay, we cannot have it at a very high level because ammonia is very toxic to the uh, organism, aquatic organism. Okay, if it's in the high uh, ammonia, let's say kalau you beli ikan, so or udang, and then you have a very high ammonia in your ponds, definitely your fish will die. So that's very important for you to make sure that the ammonia level is very, very low. It need to be below than 0 0.5. Okay, so those ammonia, it can only be break down in by microbes. Okay, let's say nitrosomonas, nitrococcus, they are the most important bacteria that break down, that convert the ammonia into the nitrate, which is a less toxic. And then we need nitrobacter, nitrospera, to break down the nitrate into the nitrates, and then they will change into the nitrogen gases. So if we find those bacteria, we can always control the ammonia. But as far as my concern is that uh, it's not easy to isolate nitrosomonas, nitrobacter, but if you guys able to isolate this type of the bacteria, you can easily use them as a water treatment. Okay. So if you polypurify and then you will hasilkan and then you uh, test it into the water, it can improve the water quality and then you can make a product. Okay, you can have a product that can uh, help into uh, management of the water quality. And they are also, okay, uh, each of the trophic of the bacteria, they have different functions. Okay, so that microbial communities need, they are the different functions, they have beneficial effects there. So this is at a genus level, okay. Let's say uh, on this one, okay, you have a dinorosiobacter. Rosiobacter need always a good bacteria. Lah. They sometimes they like to melekat pada organism, it's either they, uh, they melekat ataupun jarang they, uh, apa, uh, free floating. You, they always need substrate uh, untuk dia uh, melekat. So uh, they, they got the energy from the sunlight and then those, uh, the green uh, bacteria, so they are helping in the carbon fixations, okay, they can uh, serve as the hydrogen sulfate electron acceptor, okay, they can uh, fix the carbon dioxide, 
And then if you have a hydrogeno uh, pega, so those are facultative autotroph uh, that uh, help in the growth with the hydrogens. Okay, and then heterotrophic bacteria here, they will help in the ammonia oxidation, nitrate reduction. So we have like a million okay, type of the microbes. So usually each of the microbes, they are unique. So each of the bacteria, they have their own function. This is only for us to discover what is their potential. Okay, so Allah makes things are very beautiful. So each of the makhluk yang ada, always ada dia punya own apa dia punya own kelebihan so it's for us to discover those things okay and there's also cyanobacteria okay in the aquatic ecosystem so uh, cyanobacteria is a bacteria but with a chloroplast uh, dia ada chlorophyll so which is the take it in sunlight water and then they do a photosynthesis the size and then they produce the oxygen. So those cyanobacteria, they are capable in doing the process of the nitrogen fixation. So when they make uh, oxygen, okay, the cyanobacteria, ni, they make an oxygen through the photosynthesis. So those oxygen will be used by other organisms. Uh, so this is how, how they benefit others. And they are also playing a very huge role in food change and also in food webs. Okay, let's say like water. Water, they have a plankton. So they use the plankton. So the aquatic insects is actually they eat those plankton. And the fish eat the aquatic insects. And then the big fish eating the small fish. And the human eat the fish. So now you see the relationship. How from the smaller, smaller things into the big human humans. So they are actually, they are uh, into uh, the same food web. So let's say if one aquatic insect being disturbed so it will disturb the small fish and then they will disturb the big fish and then for human then you cannot consume the fish okay because they have been disturbed so this is how important for us to really take care of those food web okay some of people they are studying on the plankton how you want to increase the plankton in the aquatic environment okay how you want to make sure that the aquatic insect they eat enough plankton so that the small fish can eat. So uh, there's so many things can be studied. Okay, uh, there's so many things in the aquatic ecosystem that you guys can explore. Okay, you can always explore on the water itself, like Dr. Akrima, they study in the water. So they have to make sure that the water is clean. Uh, there's no heavy metal that's free from the pollution. Why they need that? Because to make sure that the food wet, uh, everything are in the right place. So the plankton have uh, things, uh, have a good environment to live, and then the aquatic insect have a plankton to eat. So everything, uh, we do it for uh, other purpose, lah. okay? And then, uh, meanwhile, in the food chain, okay, there are the three types, okay, there are the classical pelagic food web, and then there are the microbial loop, and there are the benthic food web. So the classical pelagic ni ialah is based on the solar radiation, which is that uh, the nutrient ni deactivated using the photosynthesis. So uh, photosynthesis is very important. So when they activate uh, those uh, process, okay, they akan berkakan nutrition, nutrient. Those nutrient will be uh, will be fed by phytoplankton, zooplankton. So those are of food, okay, by the large predator, by the fish, and also the microbial. Microbial will play a role in doing all the process, all the synthesis, all the mechanism. Uh, these of organic matters uh, will be break down by the bacteria, by the uh, algae, and then those the food web, okay, much like bacteria, apa, uh, macrophage, okay, large predators ni on the food web. So they are feed all depends on the bacteria punya synthesis and also it's depending on the uh, nutrient uh, but, uh, provided by the photosynthesis. So literally, they are actually uh, related to each other. And uh, also, uh, there's a symbiosis between the bacteria and algae. Let's say the 
organic oxygen uh, need by the bacteria in order for them to produce a new cell because they need an oxygen and also uh, the bacteria okay they can they produce carbon dioxide so those carbon dioxide they need by the algae in order for algae to create a new cell okay by using the sunlight so this we call it symbiosis meaning that they need each other okay both of them will get the benefit and uh, also they are they uh, absorb the heavy metal microalgae okay microalgae and bacteria so uh, they have their punya capability okay they can absorb uh, heavy metals let's say for the algae because in algae they have a high metal binding capacity which is the presence of the polysaccharide those polysaccharide ni lah jadikan tempat as a binding site for the metals. The polysaccharides not only in the algae, in the bacteria, gram-positive bacteria, they have a polysaccharide. So those keliling the punya cell wall tu, okay, memang ada specific binding site untuk heavy metal. That's why they said that they are able to uh, absorb uh, those uh, heavy metal. Is either they use it as the punya nutrients or they just absorb it and then they uh, kill it okay so this is the example of the algae species and also the target metals like a corella you know corella right corella that like usually we use it as our supplement so they have target metals they, 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 they suka cadmium so that cadmium will bind into the corella and tetracelmis okay also a very common uh, microalgae so they target metal is zinc okay so uh, there's also the roles of the uh, microorganism in aquatic ecosystem so for others okay there's so many uh, banyak lagi dia punya role but uh, i'm all just focusing on the yang main thing lah so like macam yang i focus this one is a biological control strategies so those micro, uh, specifically in uh, aquaculture system, okay, dalam aquaculture lah, sebab saya punya bidang is aquaculture kan. So there's so many term on the use of the microbes as a control, biological control strategies. So we use a micro in the probiotics, in prebiotics, symbiotics, postbiotic, okay, we use it as a bacteriophage, phytobiotic, chromosetic interfere. Because, you know, in order for, for disease to happen, dia kena ada tiga, tiga benda. Host, pathogen and environment. Host is us. Okay, udang, ikan, manusia is a host. Kita panggil dia perumah. So, kena ada pathogen and environment. Those disease only happen kalau ada imbalance between those three. Okay, meaning that kalau host, pathogen and environment, they are balanced. Takkan ada disease. Sebab uh, pathogen is everywhere. Kalau uh, kalau kita pun, uh, pathogen ni dekat mana-mana. Cuma kalau dia dekat dalam control, kalau dia ada control amount, dia won't cause a disease. Let's say kalau dia uh, imbalance, tiba-tiba pathogen ni, dia increase the numbers. So, dah jadi imbalance. That is why it can cause a disease to the host. Okay. So, what cause the imbalance? Usually, kalau yang cause imbalance tu ialah stress. Kalau dalam aquatic environment, pollution tadi, climate change, those are stress. Kalau in human, what causes a disease? It causes stress okay, because of stress. That why some people, dia punya immunity to certain diseases berbeza. Let's say like COVID, people say, oh, it's depending on the person. So that person might get uh, worse uh, symptoms. Some person, they are not that worse because it's based on our immunity. Okay, how? we how we stand for ourselves so some people when they stress they easily get disease okay they senang dapat penyakit sebab dia punya immune system low so this the same things uh what's uh the microbes in lah so that microbe ni akan tentukan sama ada uh, easily to affects you or not okay so i'm focusing on the probiotics because dekat dalam lab i uh, i develop probiotics i develop probiotics for fish and also for shrimp for aquatic animals so uh, the definitions of the probiotics, so probiotic, it must be a live microorganism, okay? So probiotic is a live microorganism when you consume it in the adequate amount, okay? This is very important. Amount yang, yang betul, adequate amount, then it will confer a benefit. Kalau you ambil 
not in the right amount, it totally will cause you harm. Okay, so that is why the definition is a live microorganism, but you have to make sure that you administer it in the adequate amount as a feed or food supplement, then it will confer a benefit to the host. So what the probiotic does is that it able to improve the water quality by by helping in the nitrogen uh, nit uh, nitrogens and ammonia breakdown and those by helping to reduce the phosphate by helping to reduce the ammonia by helping to reduce uh, to help the water quality and they also help uh, to uh, apa lawan penyakit okay a bad bacteria so it it will have a, it will uh, contribute to the healthy fish so they improve gut my gut microbiota why? Okay, kenapa human digalakkan makan probiotics, makan yogurt? Okay, in your digestive system, okay, when you eat those good microbes, so those good microbes will colonize on your gut. Bila dekat you punya gut dah colonized by a good bacteria, when the bad bacteria come, they have no place for them to colonize. So bacteria ni, kalau dia tak ada tempat untuk dia duduk, melekat, dia akan mati. So, they can stay lama. So, that is why you prepare yourself. You prepare you punya gut. You prepare you punya badan with a good bacteria. Okay, that's why you are encouraged to eat yogurt, to take probiotics. Uh, for anyone that have a problem with a perut, gut, uh, anything, that's why when you see a doctor, doctor will uh, kata, okay, take uh, probiotics. And then those probiotics is able to enhance the growth. Enhance the survival. Of course, it's enhance the survival because uh, they will avoid from you getting sick, getting infected with the bad bacteria. So they improve digestion, improve immunity. And they also have antagonistic compound. So bacteria as a whole has a potential, has a good effect. But what they are produced, what's the good bacteria, they are produced compound. Those compounds are very important. Those compounds are actually working uh, Okay, working uh, to bagi beneficial effects. Okay, some of the compound, they inhibit the quorum sensing. Tadi quorum sensing tu quorum kan, bacteria jahat ke baik, diorang bercakap bersama sendiri. So, by having a good bacteria, those compound will inhibit that interactions. So, when they inhibit that interaction, they, can, they cannot communicate, then they cannot uh, ni lah jadi bad lah jadi jahat okay and they have antibacterial antivirulence and also uh, seropause pause ni apa uh, hormone lah okay so those are the uh, what's are probiotics so the probiotics is made by the microorganism oh okay and yeah and I think uh, that's the end sebab kalau kita nak cakap pasal aquatic microbes there's a very long talk that is why I have one specific subject of the aquatic microbe because of different topics uh, that I teach. So the, tadi tu I just sharing you the general one. So this is IAQUAS, okay, uh, the institute in located in Port Dickson. So we have hatcheries, so we have a microalgae room, so we have some lab, uh, even though it's still under construction. So uh, those things, uh, apa, those uh, ni kita buka lah open. We are open for the visitors. And we are also open for you guys. Okay, if you want to make a visit, maybe Dr. Su uh, can arrange a visit to Ayakwas. Uh, you are always welcome. And then I'll show you around. And there's a very beautiful place. If you see behind me, it's an Ayakwas. It's an institute that facing the sea. Okay, so with that, uh, thank you. Thank you for listening. And I hope uh, you gain some knowledge and I hope you learn a lot from uh, this uh, sharing session. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Murni. Uh, very nice uh, presentation. I will stop the recording then.